Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shivani Sharda, working as Assistant Professor at Amity Institute of Biotechnology, Amity University, Noida. We are presenting the module that gives basic understanding of the molecular processes associated with RNA biogenesis. This has been split as messenger RNA processing and regulation followed by rRNA and tRNA processing event details in other modules. Cells produce several types of RNA. The major functional one is messenger RNA, hiding the information in its sequence for the synthesis of protein products. The small nuclear RNA termed as snRNA or the heterogeneous hnRNA, ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA products are utilized as the enzymatic and structural units catering a variety of cellular processes. Nascent RNA polymerase II transcripts participate in numerous enzymatic reactions, a concept that ascertains a co-transcriptional as well as a post-transcriptional event during the symbolic processes of RNA biogenesis. All these events suggest a functionally significant coupling that encompass the co-regulation of synthesis and processing. The primary transcript in messenger RNA are called pre-mRNAs are first coated in RNA stabilizing proteins that protect them from degradation while it is processed and exported out of the nucleus. The processing steps follow the core molecular processes that have versatile impacts on gene expression and regulation pathways such as transcriptional termination, splicing, mRNA export, translational and overall mRNA turnover. The three important steps of pre-mRNA processing are the addition of stabilizing and signaling factors at the 5 prime and 3 prime ends of the molecule and the removal of intervening sequences that do not specify the appropriate amino acids. In rare cases, the mRNA transcript can be edited after it is transcribed. The fundamental molecular mechanisms and regulation of the processing have been demarcated through biochemical, genetic and structural analysis where the core cis elements and majority of the basal transacting factors have been identified. Let us look forth to understand the vital mRNA processing events in this module. RNA processing events and mechanisms involves functionally the structural and chemical modifications of the newly synthesized RNA molecules. The primary transcript or the precursor RNA molecules also termed as pre-mRNA undergo several levels of processing to the final product transcript. From the point of view of the transcript, pre-mRNA processing includes five processes, the 5' prime end capping in which the 5' prime triphosphate of the pre-mRNA is cleaved and a guanosine monophosphate is added and subsequently methylated. The second step is editing in which individual RNA residues are converted to alternative bases. For example, adenosine is converted to enosine by base deamination to produce messenger RNAs encoding distinct protein products. The third part of the pre-RNA modification includes splicing in which introns are removed and exons are ligated together by the spliceosome machinery. The fourth uh, modification to the pre-mRNA molecules is the 3' end formation which involves pre-mRNA cleavage and synthesis of the poly A tail and paradoxically the fifth modification is utilized for degradation of the precursor molecules. Further overall changes occur as long precursor or parent RNA molecules are pruned to the required length. A priori each of these modifications might occur independently of the others, though many studies have revealed functional relationships between these processes and has been showed to be co-transcriptional. Importantly, a number of transactive 
factors required for pre-mRNA processing directly bind to RNA polymerase which stimulates processing and in some cases processing feedbacks to the RPOL activity. This has led to the proposal that transcription and processing occur in a gene expression factory composed of machines linked together for the purposes of efficiency and regulation. If we talk about the messenger RNA processing in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, in prokaryotes the messenger RNA is usually short-lived resulting in a sequence of events of its synthesis, translation and degradation without much modification. On the contrary, eukaryotic messenger RNA is generally stable and undergoes sequential elaborate processing as transcription and RNA processing is coupled and localized at discrete places in the nucleus. The precursor pre-mRNA in eukaryotes has been indicated as heterogeneous RN nuclear RNA or HNRNA as unlike to prokaryotic system it has a diversity in gene size and presence of partially processed molecules. There is involvement of various mRNA processing factors likewise of spliceosome and polyadenylation enzymes attached to the RNA polymerase C-terminal tail in the elongation complex that directly links the transcription and processing in eukaryotes. As learned here, pre-mRNAs are associated with heteronuclear ribonucleoproteins containing conserved RNA binding domains. The nascent RNA transcripts from protein coding genes and mRNA processing intermediates are collectively referred as pre-mRNA. These RNA molecules are associated with abundant set of nucleoproteins called HNRNPs enclosing the heteronuclear RNAs. The ribonucleoprotein particles through binding studies suggest that they associate with different regions of a newly made pre-mRNA molecule as determined by the sequence of the RNA. The functional role assigned to heteronuclear riboproteins is the assistant in processing and transport of messenger RNAs. The association of pre-messenger RNAs with HNRNP proteins may prevent the formation of short secondary structures thereby making the pre-mRNAs accessible for interaction with other macromolecules. The diversity of HNRNP proteins suggests that they probably have other molecular functions as well. The slides further give the important steps linked to the pre-mRNA processing. Let us proceed to understand the finer molecule details of the modification events associated with mRNA processing. We begin with the N modification of methylation of mRNA. The 5' cap is added to the nascent RNAs coupled briskly after initiation by RNA polymerase 2. Pre-mRNA is modified with 7 methyl guanosine triphosphate cap at the 5' prime end when RNA is being synthesized and is only 25 to 30 bases long. This initial step in RNA processing is catalyzed by capping at the 5' prime ends and this is due to direct binding of the dimeric capping enzymes which associates with the phosphorylated carboxyl terminal tail domain which is also retermed as CTD of RNA polymerase 2 because the capping enzyme does not associate with polymerase 1 or 3 capping is specific for transcripts produced by RNA polymerase 2. Two proteins in humans and three counterparts in yeast are responsible for the triphosphatase, guanine transferase and methyl transferase activities. When polymerase 2 switches from initiation to processive elongation, its C-terminal domain, the CTD of the large subunit becomes hyperphosphorylated. On the first two serine residues in the heptad, the hyperphosphorylated form of the CTD results in triphosphatase activity of the dimeric enzyme 
leading to the removal of gamma phosphate from the 5 prime end of the nascent RNA emerging from the surface of RNA polymerase 2. The other subunits stimulated by the phosphorylation of the second serine of the CTD heptad as an active guanylyl transferase transfers the GMP moiety from GTP to the 5 prime diphosphate of the nascent transcript. This creates the guanosine 5 prime 5 prime triphosphate structure. In the final steps, separate enzymes transfer methyl groups from S adenosyl methionine to the N7 position of the guan guanine and the 2 prime oxygen of ribosis at the 5 prime of the nascent RNA. The recruitment and regulation of the capping enzymes through the direct binding to the polymerase 2 C terminal domain provide a complete explanation for the capping of polymerase 2 linked transcripts. The 5 prime cap modification itself renders pre mRNA and mRNA resistant to the action of 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleases. In addition, the cap serves as a binding site for two important factors, the cap binding complex CBC in the nucleus and the translation initiation factor ELF4E in the cytoplasm. CBC binding is co-transcriptional and plays a role in splicing of the first intron promoting the nucleocytoplasmic export of USN RNAs and supports a pioneer round of messenger RNA translation in the cytoplasm. Thus, the rapid and highly specific addition of the 5 prime cap to polymerase 2 transcribed RNAs has important consequences for the lifetime of pre mRNA and this cascade of events can attribute to the initial interaction of the capping enzymes with polymerase 2. Conclusively, capping is the first level of processing of mRNA that involves the addition of an inverted guanosine triphosphate residue at the 5 prime end of the nascent eukaryotic mRNA. The reaction catalyzed by the enzyme guanylyl transferase proceeds in a backward alignment relative to the rest of the bases in the RNA generating an unusual 5 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond. The guanine base resulting from the reaction has a position G7 being methylated and the structure is known as cap 0, while in higher order eukaryotes having position 02 of the ribose moiety corresponding to the position plus 1 of the original transcript in the next one the nucleosides thus generating the cap 1 and cap 2 structures indicating that it is not just the the first nucleotide that could get the cap but also in some cases the preceding nucleotides which is nucleotide number 2 and 3 could also get the cap indicated as cap 1 cap 2. The end modification of pre mRNAs is continued through cleavage at specific 3 prime sites and rapid polyadenylation. Once the elongation is complete, the pre mRNA is cleaved by an endonuclease between a consensus sequence by the sequence AAUAAA and a GU rich residues. An enzyme called poly A polymerase then adds a string of approximately 200 adenosine residues called the poly A tail. This modification further protects the pre mRNA from degradation and the signals the export of the cellular factors that the transcript needs to be exported to the cytoplasm. The tail of the eukaryotic mRNA thus is a long string of adenosines at its 3 prime end that is generated by the endonucleolytic cleavage of the growing RNA molecules 10 to 30 nucleotides downstream after the 5 prime CA dinucleotide. 
three prime end of maturing mRNAs called polyadenylase adds the string of adenine nucleotides. The three prime end modification is achieved by utilizing a multi subunit complex composed of trimeric cleavage polyadenylation specificity factor CPSF that recognize the poly A site or the AAUAAA sequence an endonuclease comprising the GU tract binding, two cleavage stimulation factors or CSTs that undertake the cutting step, the enzyme polyadenylate polymerase PAP accommodating the addition of adenylate residues and some other uncharacterized components. The three prime processing factors have been identified in eukaryotes as a part of the pre-mRNA processing machinery that includes the poly-A polymerase PAP, the poly-A binding proteins PAPBs, the RNA polymerase 2 large subunit and 4 multi subunit protein complexes. All of these factors except for PAPBs are required for cleavage but CPSF and PAP are believed to be sufficient for the subsequent polyadenylation. Poly-A polymerase is perhaps the best characterized 3 prime processing factors that contains the nucleotidyl transferase catalytic domain at the N terminal half which is highly conserved. A RNA binding domain is located near the middle of this protein. RNA binding by PAP alone is however not sequence specific and its recruitment to the 3 prime processing complex requires interactions with other 3 prime processing factors including CPSF and CFIM. The C terminal domain of PAP contains a bipartite nuclear localization signal and it is rich in serine and theronine residues. The CTD of PAP is a hot spot for post translation modifications and plays important regulatory roles. The multi subunit complex is pitched to be linked to the RNA polymerase 2 elongation complex where the poly A binding protein PAPB stays associated with mRNA and binds to the C terminal tail of the enzyme and in due course enhances the processivity of the polyadenylate polymerase enzyme. The precise role of polyadenylation is still not clear, messenger RNA more stable and helping in translation are the initial functions assigned to the tail. Essentially polyethyls serve as the main reason in eukaryotes that survive so much longer than mRNAs in prokaryotes. Once the modifications have been completed, mRNAs are ready to be exported from the nucleus and will now travel through the nuclear pores and enter cytoplasm where awaiting ribosomes will translate them using the RNA code to build polypeptides. The steps related to the mRNA processing include RNA splicing, referring further processing of pre-mRNA transcripts directing for the meticulous removal of introns that are the non-coding elements present in the eukaryotic genes. Splicing is considered to be accurate as a single base mistake while splicing would result in frame shift of the coding sequence and henceforth translational changes. The methodology of the entire process is depicted in the slides in detail. The coding sequence of almost all eukaryotic genes are interrupted with non-coding regions called introns because they represent the intervening sequences while the coding regions are called exons. Special RNA protein complexes called small ribonuclear proteins or SNRPs carry out these processes. Several SNRNPs group together to form functional splicing unit called spliceosome. Spliceosomes are able to recognize short signal sequences in pre-mRNA molecules that identify the boundaries of introns and exons. When a spliceosome has found an intron, it binds correctly 
and through the formation of a lariat shaped structure, it cuts the intron out and splices the exons that were on each side of the intron to each other. The splicing mechanistic processes include sequential cross esterification reactions characterized by a nucleotide attack on the phosphodiester bond joining the intron and upstream exon, thus liberating the three prime end of the exon. This reaction in sequence is followed by another similar reaction where the free hydroxyl group attacks the phosphodiester linkage of the intron to the downstream exon. The intron thereby is ejected and the exons are joined together. The details of the processes related to the splicing can be demarcated through the text information presented in the module. Initially thought to provide for a gene to encode multiple proteins, the variety of choice of alternate splice sites to be utilized in a particular cell is controlled by the use of U1 SNRNP splicing factor UUF and SR proteins. The process is dictated to let arrange the splicing components to specific sites on pre-mRNA through the stimulation or inhibition of particular splice sites. The nuclear pre-mRNA introns are unable to splice autocatalytically, forming highly divergent in their size and structure where short conserved elements are called the cis acting sites or the splice control sites. The 5 prime left splice site is considered as the donor site and the 3 prime right splice site is the acceptor site and a branch site is involved in the splicing reaction. In eukaryotes, the process is mostly frequented by the GTAG or the GUAG as in RNA code group of introns embedded within a weaker consensus sequence. The cutting and pasting mechanism in the splicing event is coordinated in splicing machinery termed as spliceosome or SNRP. Five SNRPs which have been codified as U1 to U6 recognize the three sites on pre-mRNA explicitly termed as the 5 prime site, the 3 prime site and the branch site. The protein part of the SNRP supervises the cutting and joining reactions. The protein U1 recognizes the 5 prime splice site while U2 binds the branch site and a protein called the U2 accessory factor binds the 3 prime splice site. The U4 U6 complexes with U2 which is followed by the U5 arrival binding first to the downstream exon and migrating to the intron exon boundary. The splicing is then proceeded as a two step process wherein the free 2 prime hydroxyl group on the active adenylate residue at the branch site attacks the phosphodiester bond of the upstream exon to the intron. This is the first trans esterification step that leads to bonding of the internal adenylate to the guanidylate residue of the 5 prime splice site through a 5 prime 2 prime phosphodiester bond. Now the 5 prime end of the intron loops around and generates a lasso shaped structure termed as a lariate. The second step is when the 3 prime hydroxyl group of the upstream exon attacks the phosphodiester linkage of the intron to the downstream exon which is the second trans esterification reaction at the 3 prime splice site. This is depicted as intron DNA forming a lasso as represented in the slides and the rearrangement of the complex happens. The exons as a result ligate together releasing the intron branch lariate structure which is later degraded. The methodology adopted is most accurate with usually no exon skipping due to the generic nature of splice signals. Now we come to understand the group 2 cell splicing introns which are mostly populated in plants and eukaryotes. These are the autocatalytic introns 
Like the group 1 introns, though unlike them, they do the splicing by the 2 prime hydroxyl group of an internal adenosine residue that attacks the phosphodiester bond linking the intron and the upstream exon. This generates again a lariat and a free exon with a 3 prime terminal hydroxyl group. This group subsequently attacks the phosphodiester bond of the intron and the downstream exon with the release of the lariate intermediate. The intrinsic capacity of the self splicing introns is due to the 6 stem loop secondary structure conformation bringing the exons close together adopted by these which are similar to the branch site of nuclear introns as described above. This is suggestive of the evolutionary drift of class 2 introns which are homogeneous while class 1 introns shifting the splicing to transregulatory complex having diversified secondary structures. Group 1 introns are mostly concentrated in mitochondrial genomes very rare in the prokaryotic introns that are autocatalytic and use a guanosine containing nucleotide cofactor that provides the free hydroxyl group. The RNA itself here provides for the catalytic activity thus acting as an RNA enzyme or ribozyme where the activated RNA is folded into a series of base pair stem and loop structures. Splicing reaction is proceeded when the free hydroxyl group of the cofactor attacks the phosphodiester bond joining the intron and the upstream exon extending the intron by adding guanosine to its 5 prime end thereby resulting in a free exon with the terminal 3 prime hydroxyl group. The next step here is the transesterification reaction where similar to the reactions above the upstream exon attacks the bond linking the intron to downstream exon. This releases the intron as a linear fragment containing a 5 terminal guanidylate residue. The group 1 introns have 9 hairpin like secondary structure that are directly involved in the recognition of the exon sequences with hairpin namely P1 considered as internal guide sequence juxtaposing the exons by pairing and ensuring splicing specificity. Other specified classes of introns and reactions have been briefly described in the text linked to the module. Now we come to include the phenomena of alternate splicing which generates a milieu of RNA types. The eukaryotic RNA regulatory systems have the unique concept of making use of different splice sites within the same gene by different cell types within the same organism. This invariant processing results in a single original DNA sequence that can give rise to different proteins having distinct but overlapping functions. Alternative splicing is controlled through either constitutive or quantitative controls that means they are dependent on the quantity of splicing factors often occurring when 5 prime or 3 prime sites are utilized for differential splicing. The other types of controls involves dedicated splicing proteins that are tissue specific where splice signals are wired by binding splice enhancers or repressors which are collectively termed as cis acting elements in the primary pre mRNA transcript. The types of alternate splicing that form the major regulation step where primary transcript undergoes differential changes that may be termed as splice variants or splice isoforms are described further in the linked module. The final processing events associated with pre mRNA is RNA editing. It is one of the peculiar modification reported for mRNA where alteration of its base sequences is done. Such modification within the coding sequence of the bases leads to changed protein product. Though usually the protein encoding gene at the time of translation remains unaffected. Still RNA editing is considered as a co or post transcriptional mechanism 
that shows marked changes in the information encoded in the exon sequences of mRNA. This process is mostly associated with organella genomes though minor influences are also exerted in mammalian nuclear mRNAs. The genes that undergo extensive RNA editing are called cryptogenes wherein the structure of the gene product cannot be deduced from the genomic DNA sequence. The evolutionary significance of RNA editing is uncharacterized, but it is most likely linked with functional consequences and predominance of pyrimidine insertions into purine rich sequences. RNA editing in mammals is restricted to base substitution majorly consisting of cytosine to uracil or adenosine to inosine changes, while plants have both cytosine to uracil and uracil to cytosine editing. The A to I transition occurs by deamination of double stranded RNA adenosine to inosine. The recognition of such modification is through the formation of double stranded regions by base pairing between altering sites and sequences from neighboring introns. This implicates the role of intron sequences in the final coding sequence of the mature mRNA making it a co-transcriptional editing step that occurs before splicing of introns. The inosine generated hair act as a guanosine during translation process further leading to the change in the sequence of the resultant protein if occurring within a coding frame leading to a potential change in amino acid sequence of the encoded proteins that may be functional changes or silent transitions. Here we conclude with the conclusion and perspective of the pre-mRNA processing to the functional mRNA. Co-transcriptional RNA processing is probably the consequence both of the relatively fast kinetics of processing reactions compared with the relatively long time that it takes to synthesize an entire pre-mRNA and of direct bounding of some RNA processing factors to the transcriptional machinery. These observations are suggestive of co and post transcriptional modulation and regulation of mRNA and the high fidelity processes requiring a milieu of internal sequence signals or co associations of proteins, enzymes, base modifications that reflect the process transcripts turnover and stability. Given the existing evidence for transcription units as gene expression factories, there are plenty of structural and tightly engineered steps that interplay between the kinetics of transcription and processing that is the blueprint for assembling distinct sets of machinery. Thanks for watching the details on molecular events associated with mRNA processing for the ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA processing, please visit the respective modules and learning materials. Additional details of the processing and regulation of messenger RNA modules are in the write-up provided in the module. Please visit the EPG Part Shala for other related biology topics.